Hello, it's me, Recky, and of course, welcome back for another reaction uh, with me, Recky. Well, the thing is, uh, I used to be a big fan of uh, football and uh, a hockey. So both the NFL and the NHL has been something that I have loved for many, many years. It was a long time ago since I was 100% devoted to both. Uh, for some reason, Miami Dolphins was uh, the team I liked when Dan Marino was a quarterback. And of course, uh, for me, it was Quebec, then Colorado when it comes to NHL. And uh, ever so slightly Detroit Red Wings as well, because there was a ton of Swedes, and I was a huge, huge fan of Peter Forsberg. But there's one sport in the, NA, uh, in the, in the United States that always got me thinking. I know very, very little about baseball. Some of the rules... I know, but overall, it's definitely a sport I know less about when it comes to other sports. Basketball is not my thing at all, so that we're not going to go <laughs> we're not go into that one. Baseball is the name of the game, and we are going to learn. Well, I'm going to learn the the basic rules or the baseball rules for beginners. Beginners. This is an easy explanation, and this is on the channel called the School of sports i know i have no idea what it is i had no idea how the video is made or done but i think it sounds like a really good spot to learn something new about baseball if you want to check it out the link for the school of sports channel and of course for the video we're going to watch is located right down there in the description so go there and give them the support that they so much deserve if you do enjoy this like and of course subscribe Something I would greatly appreciate. A big thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon and channel membership. Thank you and God bless. A big shout out to the Supreme Tier donators on both platforms, YouTube and Patreon. Thank you. Personal shout outs goes to the ultimate supporters. Deja, Walt, Dwayne, Dana, Troy, Robert, Matt, Barbara, Kathy, Sarah, and Terry. That's a nice list right there. Thank you so much. All right, let's do this. It's 14 minutes long, and I have no idea. And uh, I'm going to crank it up here. I don't know how loud it is. Hello, friends. Welcome to the School of Sports. In this video, I'm going to tell you the rules of baseball. Baseball is played with a bat, ball, and a glove. Now, the bat is circular in shape, so it's hard to hit the ball where you really want to hit it. Baseball is played in massive stadiums. And you would see four blocks on the baseball field they are called base and because it's played with the ball the game is called baseball cool baseball is played between two teams one team would be batting at a time and the other team would be fielding at a time and after an inning they would switch their roles so the batting team would field and the fielding team would bat baseball is played in a 90 degree area so only this area would be used for playing if the ball goes into any other area it's not really useful is out of bounds i think i heard that before out of bounds maybe now the basic purpose of baseball is pitcher throws the ball batsman hits the ball in the playing area and then batsman goes to first base second base third base and back to the home that is one run the team that scores more runs wins the match. Let's take a look at the top view. This is how it looks like from the top. This is a field. This is how it looks like from top. Let's cover some terminology. This is a pitching mound. This is a home plate and then first base, second base, third base. So there are four bases and then this is center field, left field, right field and foul line. So foul line determines the playing area. Oh, if the ball It's a foul line. So if the ba the ball goes out from the lines on the left on the foul lines, it's a foul, and it doesn't count. Ball is between the foul line. It's good. Otherwise, it's not good. And then there's a places for coaches. And if we look at the pitching mound and the home plate from this area, this is how it's gonna look like. You have a pitcher and the batter and the catcher and the umpire. Pitcher is objective is to throw the ball to the catcher and batter need to hit it. Pitcher can throw ball from seventy to ninety five miles per hour. And the distance is short, so the ball can come in just half a second. Oh, it didn't need man. to make his judgment to hit the ball within half a second. That's fast. Mostly you would see television angle, which would have a camera behind the pitcher. So this is what you're going to see when you look at the TV. Here's the batsman. 
this guy is a pitcher and he's a catcher and here's an empire and you see this white box this is called a strike zone so what is this strike zone basically the objective of pitcher is to throw the ball into the strike zone strike zone is between the waist and the knee that's the height and the width is equal to the base plate with the same for all players but the height depends upon the height of the player taller players have a bigger strike zone let's talk about strike what is strike in baseball when pitcher throws a ball in the strike zone and the batter didn't swing his bat that is a strike even if ball is on the boundary that is strike if pitcher throws three strikes then the player is strike out the player would go out and then the next player would come in another thing is ball what is ball if a pitcher throws a ball outside the strike zone and batter didn't swing his bat then that is a ball if pitcher throws four balls then a ball. walk to first base so so you actually can walk yeah. the batsman would go to the first but i know that i heard that some teams are uh some players are actually really good at getting walks basically that they come in and they uh, very often get to walk to first base space and as you see here the second batsman would come and stand on the home plate there's another way in which strike can happen if a batsman has swung his bat and then it doesn't matter whether the ball is inside the strike zone or the ball is outside the strike zone if he's not able to contact the ball and swing his bat that is a strike this is where it oh so when the ball is not in the strike zone it could be up on the moon, but if the batter strikes or try to hit the ball, that's automatically a strike. It gets very interesting. If the pitcher knows that the batsman is going to swing, then he's going to throw a crazy ball and there's no way the hitter is going to hit it and that would be a strike. That's oh, what shit. the pitcher needs. Another thing is hit by pitch. So if a pitcher throws the ball and it hits the batsman, then it's a hit by pitch and then pitcher gets to walk so he would move to the first base and the next player would come in oh directly. let's talk about foul so if a pitcher throws the ball it hits the bat and then it goes into the non-playing area that's called foul so you see here the pitcher throws the ball and these are the foul lines so area within the foul line is fine if it goes outside then it's a foul ball so any of these shot the ball would be a foul ball so what is really foul ball? Is it a strike or a ball? It depends. It depends upon the situation. It depends upon the situation. If there's a zero strike and then there's a foul, then that is counted as strike. If there's one strike and it's a foul, then it is counted as a strike. If you have a two strikes and then you do foul, it doesn't really count. So if what the hell? Strikes before play. So he, there's no strikes. All right, I'm I, trying to wrap my head around this. So this is the second time they throw, and this is the second time there's a strike. And I have no idea. I'm trying to. I think I understand it, but I, I, I can't really explain it. Mm. So if there's no strikes and there's a foul, that's autom automatically a strike. <laughs> if you have a zero or one strike then the foul would be counted as a strike if okay. you have two strike then foul doesn't really mean anything let's look at a fair ball the most fun part so pitcher threw the ball batsman hit it and it's in the playing field anywhere in the playing field is fine even if ball lands in the playing field and then goes out that is also fine once player hits the ball it's a fair ball he must go to the first base. He doesn't have any choice. He needs to go to the first base. Let's take a quick look of what we learned so far. Ball is in the strike zone. Batter didn't swing his bat. That strike, three strikes, is equal to out. Ball is outside the strike zone. Batter didn't swing his bat. That is a ball. Four ball is equal to one walk. Batter swing his bat but was not able to connect with the ball. Doesn't matter whether the ball is inside the strike zone or outside. It is called a strike and three strike oh. is one out. If a ball hits the batsman, that is called hit. And in that case, the batsman get to walk to the first base. If the ball strikes the bat and it goes into the foul area, then it's called foul ball. If a player has zero or one strike, then the foul would count as strike. If a player has two strike, then the foul would do nothing. If a player contact the ball and it goes into the fair fair area, it's called fair ball. In that case, the batsman must go to the first base. 
So fair. So it's a fair ball, no matter where you. As soon as as soon as you actually get the ball out on the playing field, that's a fair ball. Let's, including uh, home runs. Let's talk about the ways in which a player can get out. So the first way is here: the pitcher threw the ball, batsman hit the ball. It's in the air, and one of the fielders caught the ball. In this case, it's out. If ball went high and player catches somewhere here, it's called pop out. But if ball goes like deep into the field and there's someone catches it, it's called as a fly out. Let's talk about put out. Pitcher threw the ball, batsman hit the ball, nobody caught it directly. Now the hitter must run to the first base. But before hitter runs to the first base, if a fielder can reach to the first base with the ball in his hand, then the player is put out. In this case, because fielder is close, he reached before the batsman, so he's a put out. Let's talk about tag out. So pitcher threw the ball, hitter hits the ball, fielder is coming to get the ball, and then runner is running. Now here, the fielder with the ball has two options. One, either he moved to the base, in that case it's a put out, or he can just touch the player who's running. So if a fielder has a ball in his hand and he touches a player who's running, then it's oh. a tag out. Consider this scenario, pitcher threw so you can do a tag out any time. the ball, hitter hit the ball, and then fielder got to the ball. Now in this case, you might be wondering, you know, runner should be able to run to the first base. There's no way fielder can either touch him or he can reach to the first base. So he should be fine, right? But think about it. What if this player can reach to the first base and another player can throw the ball. Now the player is on the base, has a ball. And if they can do it before the hitter reaches first base, then hitter would be out. So that's what exactly going to happen here. I think that was a funny thing with baseball. It's a fast-paced game when they actually are playing. Other than that, it's a kind of a slow-paced game. He threw the ball before a runner reaches there, so he's out. In case runner is able to reach to the first base without getting out, then what would happen is player two would come here and he would bat. In that case, we would say first base is loaded and second player is batting. Let's talk about first base loaded and stolen base. If you remember, this is first base, this is second base, this is third base. So here first base is loaded. Now what can happen is when pitcher is throwing the ball, he can run and go to the second base. Look what happens. He went there and he's able to do it before catcher is throws the, the ball back to the player. To prevent player one to move to the base second, they move the player to the first base. The reason they do it because now in this scenario pitcher can throw ball directly to the first base and player one would be out so player oh, one needs to yeah. reach out to the first base before pitcher throws the ball and the person on the first base catches the ball now pitcher has a second option which is he needs to throw the ball to the batsman as well so he need to make decision whether he need to throw the pitch or he need to throw ball to the base so the but that depends uh if the uh the individual the guy at, uh, at the first base he can actually go all the way here but that's up to the the pitcher to decide whether to try to tag him or actually throw the ball to the uh the batter depending upon how far this guy is if he's somewhere here definitely yeah. he's out so pitcher needs to be very aware of the surroundings however i think that he can can he i think he can decide to actually he could throw he can throw to the B line here to the first base, but he could be halfway here. That means that this guy at first base, he can actually throw it to try to tag him. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's take a look at the first base loaded and it's a fair play. So first base loaded, you see a player over here and second player is batting. Ball is thrown. Ball is in the air and you would see player one is in middle of first and second base why isn't he middle of these two bases why he hasn't gone to base two is because if ball is caught then he must return to his original position before if ball is dropped then he can move to the next base so he's standing here and waiting whether ball will be caught or dropped if it's caught then he need to come to original position if it's dropped he can move on to the next bases anywhere the situation would be different if player is standing on some other base. If player is standing on third base, what would happen is he's going to wait until ball is caught because now that ball is caught, he can move now. Before ball is caught, if he moves anywhere, he need to return to the base where he started. But now that ball is caught, 
he can run here and he know there's no way this player can throw ball oh. before he can reach so his so that's actually a gamble but if, if, i don't understand if he catches so it doesn't matter this time if he catches this or not as long as he's on third base so in between the first and the second base uh and if he counts the ball and catches the ball he actually go have to go go back to his first base but if he's on third he can actually go from third uh and to the to fourth no matter if he catches this or not he's gonna run here and he's able to do it depending upon where you are you need to make those adjustments so it's a very conscious sport people need to be aware of what is happening Let's okay. talk about double play. What is double play? So consider this scenario. There's a player on first base and the second player is batting. Pitcher threw the ball. Ball went to one of the fielders. Now here, if this player can go to base two and he can get the ball before player one reaches to the base, then player one is out. And then if he can throw the ball to the first base before player two reaches, then he's also out. So because you got two outs, it's called double play let's take a look at the so that's double play basically means that you tag two at the same time and more double means two home run the most fun part of the baseball if a ball is thrown and hitter hits it outside let's take a look in the stadium if a ball is thrown and it's hit outside then it's called a home run remember you would see a outfield fence so ball should go above the outfield fence to be able to make a home run in home run, what happens is everyone would get enough time to run all the bases. Here you see there are four players, and because everyone was able to four reach points. to the home base, they would get four runs. If oh. there were two players and a home run, they get two runs. If three, three, one, one. Home run happens less frequently, but whenever it happens, it's a lot of fun. Everyone cheers up, and it's, it's really good to see this. Let's understand from high level, when a team is batting, they get three outs. If a team gets three outs, their inning is over and then other team would come to bat and they would need to field. So then team B comes and bats. So they also get three outs. These are called half innings. Combined, it's called one inning. So in one inning, they would have six outs. Another way of... Where? So one round is when team A uh, bats and they get three outs done and then team b gets uh, the switch places and gets three out that's another half inning and is that one round then we move over to yeah his problem I'm saying is in first inning you have a top half and bottom half in the top half a team is batting and b is fielding and then they would do the bottom half where b oh, would bat yeah. and a would field yeah. this would comprise of one inning in the second inning they'll do the same thing again in the first or the top half, A would bat, and in the bottom half, A would ball. So they do this for nine innings, and whoever has more score at the end wins the match. Here, after one inning, the score is zero. After second inning, A scored one, B scored two, so the score is one and two. At the end of nine innings, they look at the score, so A has five points, A won the match. If it's a tie, then they keep on going one more inning, one more inning until they have a winner. It's a long game. It's for three hours and they oh, throw on an average 300 pitches. So it's a lot of fun to watch baseball. It's a long game. A lot of things can happen. Now let's take a look at the real match. So how are you going to read a score if you're watching match on the TV? This is what you're going to see on the right bottom or the left bottom. So let's take a deeper look into it. So what is happening here? What does it really show? It's because it's the beginning of the match, the runs is 0-0. Zero, zero. The triangle pointing upward is showing LAA is batting first. When the triangle is down, it's called bottom inning and then NYY would be batting. One shows first inning because match has just started. Zero shows the out. So because there is zero out, it's zero. They have three outs and then inning would change. The first number shows ball, so if one, two, three, and if four ball, they get a walk. The second number shows strike. If three strike, then the player is out. These three square boxes show the first, second, and third base. Right now, because match started, nobody is standing on the bases. In case if there's a player on first wow. base, the first base is loaded, then you would see something uh, like this. Let's say you amazing. open up your TV, and this is what you're seeing. How to figure out what is going in the match. So if you see the runs, LAA is having seven runs, so they are leading in the match. If you look at the triangle, it's bottom. So bottom inning means NYY is batting right now. LAA has completed their batting. 
in the seventh inning. So seventh inning is going on. For NYY, they got two outs. So their last batsman is batting. If they get one more out, the, the inning would be over. The two shows, two balls has been delivered to that player and two strikes. So he needs to hit the ball. If he get one more strike, this inning is over. On the basis you... I, I really don't understand this one. So the bottom inning, uh, top inning, I, I don't understand this one. He, I, I know he said he told, uh, explained, but I'm not getting it. So bottom inning, is that the l late game or uh, and the top inning is in early game? You see there's a first and second is yellowish, which means there's a player standing on first base and second base. Now, if the batter hits a home run, imagine the batter, the player on the first base and the player on the second base, they would get three runs. So the NYY would have seven runs. So it's a close game right now. LA is leading, but it's a close game. So that's how you can make it out from the scoreboard, how the match is going. That's all from my side. I hope you liked it. Hit the like button, share yeah, it with your yeah. friends so that they can also learn. And if you want to learn about other sports, subscribe my channel. I keep posting videos about new sport so that people can learn and really enjoy the beauty of sport, the blessing to humanity. Thank you so much for your time. The goal I got, I got to tell you, uh, that was, for me at least, it was perfectly explained. 98% of everything he said was actually something I could grasp and understand. Only thing was top inning and, and end inning or last inning, whatever it was. Uh, that's the only thing I didn't understand. But um, I actually learned way more than I expected it to be. Uh, of course, I'm not completely oblivious to baseball. I mean, I'm still a huge fan of America, no matter what it is, especially sports. I was uh, completely consumed by it when I was younger. Uh, Baseball is something that I know that you have to be a super fan to actually watch the entire game. So it's a three-hour game, uh, and I highly enjoy this. If there's anything that you want me to know regarding this fascinating sport, let me know in the comment section, and uh, let me know if you're a baseball fan, and let me know why you are such a baseball fan. I would love to read your comments. Do it. If you did enjoy this, don't forget to smack the like. And of course, hit subscribe. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Reki. You stay safe.